Hi guys, Wheelie here. It's Milo weather or hot chocolate if you prefer. It's the kind of day where I don't want to take that last sip because I'm hoping it'll keep my hands warm for a few moments longer. And then I remember I can crochet. So that's a problem solved. I can have my last sip of Milo. These gloves are simple and they have thumbs. I feel like when you can make a pair of fingerless gloves or mitts or whatever you like to call these cute little numbers, when you can crochet a pair of these with little thumbs on them, you're moving up a crochet level. So my previous video on making gloves offered a pattern that was the most simplified I could come up with. This pair of gloves is still really simple. It's still very achievable for someone who is a beginner, but it has a few rather cute features that make it a bit special. The first thing to note is that this is a light worsted DK or eight ply pattern. Using a thinner yarn for a glove with thumbs is a good idea. A bulky yarn will make it difficult to use your hands. I'm using Four Seasons Marvel acrylic yarn in peach. I don't live in a particularly cold place. I think it's cold when it's under 18 C or 64 Fahrenheit. So if you live somewhere that's actually cold, try using a wool or a wool blend for warmer gloves. You'll need a crochet hook that matches your yarn, a four millimeter hook, and you'll need some scissors and a needle. I've got mine safely spearing this flower because I have a terrible habit of losing my needles and then finding them later in quite abrupt ways. Let's talk to my hand for a bit. This pattern is worked in three parts. We start by making the hand section, working most of it in half double crochet and running the seam discreetly up the palm. We'll leave a gap for the thumb and finish with a row of single crochet for a nice stable top. Then we add in the thumb with a bit of single crochet and half double crochet. Then we add the cute and comfy ribbed band. The band is the last step because it's easier to add ribbing to a project than to begin by working into ribbing. And once you've done all that, you start again and make the right glove with one small change to the pattern so the seam still runs up the palm. Let's get started. Pop a slip knot on your hook and start chaining. The length of chain you need depends on the size of your hand, so you can follow along with the pattern easily. Chain an even number. I'm going to chain 24. I've designed these gloves for women's hands and 24 is medium, 22 is small, 26 is larger, but it will depend on your crochet style too. So just make your best guess to get started. If you're making these gloves for a man or for a child younger than a tween, I'm not certain how you'll go amending the pattern. I haven't used this pattern for drastically larger or smaller hands. I think the thumb gap will be an issue. If you're after a pattern using this yarn for a man or a child, let me know and I'll work something out for you. Here's my chain of 24. We're going to slip stitch it together to make a circle. Make sure you can identify the top and the bottom of the chain. The top is smooth and the bottom has these little bumps. Bring the tail up to meet the working end. Make sure it's smooth side up the whole way around with no twists and insert your hook into the first chain just here. You only need to catch one loop of it. There are two loops on the hook. We're going to slip stitch by yarning over and pulling through both loops. Now we have a circle and we'll work the first section of the glove in the round. The first round is worked into this chain. However, we're going to be working into the back bumps of the chain. It is slightly more difficult to work into the back bumps, but it also looks better. And as we're going to be adding the ribbing on at the end, it gives us something a lot like the top of a stitch to work into when we're at that point. So just take it slowly. And if you find it tricky, remind yourself that it's only one round and you'll be breezing along working into the tops of the round below in no time. Start round one by chaining one to get up to height. We'll be working in half double crochet. Yarn over and find the back of the first chain. The first chain looks a little different because of the slip stitch join, but this is the spot you want here. Insert your hook. There are two loops and one loop of the chain on the hook. Yarn over and pull through. There are now three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. If you need to pull through them one at a time, that's fine too. Let's do one more together so I know you're comfortable with them. Yarn over and insert your hook into the back bump of the chain. There are two loops and one loop of the chain. When you yarn over and pull through, there are three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. You need to put one half double crochet into the back bump of each chain. When you work into back bumps, you might need to use your fingers to ease the hook through the chain. This is particularly true if you're a tight crocheter. 
but it can also be caused by your yarn. Some yarns are much smoother and easier to work with. Some are less forgiving and more rigid and some will split if you look at them funny. So don't be too hard on yourself if it isn't as easy as you'd like. I'll get you to pause the video now and switch it back on when you're nearing the end of the round so I can show you what to do next. When you work into the back of a chain, the end of the round looks a little confusing. I find it useful to count my stitches before finishing the round, so I'm not tempted to put an extra stitch in here. You can count your stitches from the side, recognizing that that shape is a half double crochet, or you can look at your stitches from above. Don't count the loop that's on the hook. Count these little V shapes here. So that's one, that's two, that's three. Just be careful that you don't count the chain one that got us up to height at the beginning of the round. So this is the chain one just here. This is our first half double crochet viewed from the side and this is the top of it. If you're going to count from above it's a good idea to count with the first stitch and work your way around. Counting is all very well, but how many stitches do you need for round one? Your stitch count should be the same as the length of your starting chain. I chained at 24, so I have 24 stitches. So now it's time to slip stitch to finish the round. Insert your hook under the top of both loops for that starting half double crochet. Yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook and you've finished round one. Yeah, well done. This is a good point to check whether the glove is going to fit. The circle isn't the bottom of your glove. It's going to sit a little higher. And because I didn't feel myself trying on the little circle, we're going to go forward into the distant future. This is my hand in the future. It's cold here. And the circle we've just made is the perfect size because I can squeeze my giant hand into it. Future me is showing you something totally different, but ignore her and notice where the bottom of the glove is sitting, a little higher than my wrist. If you can get your hand through the circle and it's squishing you a bit, you're going to be fine because crochet stretches. Let's go back to the present. All right, round two. Flip your little circle inside out so that you're now working around the outside of the circle. Start round two by chaining one to get up to height. Let's talk briefly about the seam. When you work in the round, you often end up with a seam that quite noticeably slants off to one side. I'll tell you where to place your first and last stitch to keep the seam where we want it. Yarn over, skip the first stitch space, insert your hook under the top of the second stitch, catching both loops, and work a half double crochet. You're going to put one half double crochet in each stitch from the round below, so your stitch count won't change. I'll get you to pause the video here and unpause when you're close to the end of the round so I can show you where to place your last stitch and what to do next. I've done all but my 24th and final stitch and now there's a choice. For this round, we skipped that first space. So you can either work your last stitch here on top of the slip stitch like this, and that is totally fine, or you can work into the first space, which is what I'm going to do. Just yarn over and insert your hook into the spot you would have worked your first stitch, ignoring the chain one that's between you and that spot and working a normal half double crochet. When you've placed your last stitch in one of those two spots, slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet in the round and we can start round three. Chain one and place the first half double crochet for round three into the first space. Pause the video here and work one half double crochet into each stitch from the round below and unpause when you're ready to finish the round. To finish round three, you don't work into that last space because we worked into the first space. Just slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. You might like to double check that your stitch count has remained steady. It should still be exactly the same as your starting chain. Chain one to start round four. Work your first stitch by skipping the first stitch space and working into the top of the second stitch along. You're going to place one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So I'll get you to pause the video here and unpause when you're ready to finish the round. Time to finish round four. We skipped that first space, so you can either work into the top of the slip stitch here or into the first space. Stick with whatever method you chose for round two. It's better to be consistent. 
Now that's done, slip stitch to the top of your starting half double crochet to end the round. Chain one to get up to height and we'll start round five. Round five is a little different. Place your first stitch in the first space. We're going to be increasing the stitch count of this round by four stitches. If you're starting with 24 stitches, your first extra stitch is placed into the same stitch as the seventh stitch along and you can follow along with me. But if you started with a different length of chain, one of your extra four stitches will be created by working into both sides of this starting stitch space. And you need to spread the other three extra stitches out fairly evenly around your circle. So for those of you starting with a chain of 24, your first six stitches are just normal. And when you get to this seventh one, you're gonna pop the eighth stitch in right next to it, just like this. There's nothing particularly special about it. You're just putting two stitches into the same spot. So the next five stitches will just be ordinary half double crochets. And the sixth one from here is going to get an extra stitch. This is my sixth stitch, so it gets a little friend into the same spot. The next five stitches are just one half double crochet in each spot. And this is number six, and it gets a second stitch in with it. There are six stitches left for this round. The first five of them just go into the top of normal stitches. And our final stitch for the round goes into the top of the slip stitch just here. There, now we've increased our stitch count this round by four stitches. Slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet to finish the round. And we can head into the next round. Round six is another increase round. Chain one to get up to height and work your first half double crochet into the first space. This round, we're going to increase our stitch count by two. If you started with a different length chain to me, you can follow along with me to place one of those increases in the first last stitch. And for the second increase, place that roughly halfway around the circle. If you're following along with me, we're increasing our stitch count to 30 this round and we'll place our first extra stitch in with our 15th stitch. So the first 14 stitches in this round are just normal half double crochets and we'll whiz through those. This is my 15th stitch, so I'm going to put an extra half double crochet into the same space with it, just here. For the rest of this round, it's one half double crochet in each space, with an extra stitch worked into the final space. Work your last stitch for the round, which for me is my 30th stitch, into the top of the slip stitch. Then slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet, and that is round six done. Round seven is where we create the thumb gap, so things change a little bit here. If this is your first glove, follow along with me. If this is your second glove, skip forward and work the alternate row seven and rejoin us for round eight. Round seven is worked in double crochet, so chain two to get up to height, and we're gonna work a double crochet into that first space. Yarn over and insert your hook. You have two loops in the top of the stitch on your hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two, two loops. Yarn over and pull through two. That's your first double crochet. Now yarn over and count forward seven stitches. We're going to skip the next six stitches and work a double crochet in the seventh. I find that it helps to make a fold. It just helps me to get the hook in and work the stitch comfortably, but you don't have to do that. So insert your hook. There are two loops in the top of the stitch. Pull up a loop, you've got three loops. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Now that's done, it's just one double crochet in each space, and that's 23 stitches for me. If your starting chain is a lot longer than mine, you might wanna leave one extra empty stitch to create a slightly bigger thumb gap. 
This thumb gap is quite nice and snug, and that's a good thing. It keeps your hands warm, and you want that thumb to fit snugly. But you do need to be able to get your thumb through it, so experiment a little and see. I'm going to whiz through this next bit because it's just one double crochet in each space, and I'll show you how we finish the round. Don't put a stitch in the top of the slip stitch. We worked into the first space for this round and we're not increasing the stitch count. So this is our starting chain two here, one, two, but we're not slip stitching to the top of the chain two. We're slip stitching to the top of the double crochet. Insert your hook into the top of the double crochet, yarn over and pull through and pull through and that finishes the round. Now chain one and we'll start round eight. We're back to working half double crochets and we'll work into that first space. The second stitch is over the thumb gap. Just work into the stitch normally. Do you see that extra bit of yarn? Don't be tempted to go underneath it. Just work into the top of the stitch as you normally would. That extra bit of yarn will come in handy when we are working the thumb later on. From here round 8 is super simple, it's one half double crochet in each stitch from the round below. If you're on track, your stitch count for round 8 will be back down to the same as your starting chain, so mine will be 24. I'll whiz through this bit and show you how to end the round. Don't work into that last space, just slip stitch to the top of the starting half double crochet to finish off the round. Round nine starts with a chain one. Skip the first space and work your first half double crochet into the second space. This is another nice easy round. Just put one half double crochet into each stitch and I'll see you at the end of the round. Your final stitch for this round is worked either in the top of the slip stitch or into that first space that we skipped at the start of the round. Just stay consistent with the method you used earlier in the glove and then slip stitch to join. Chain one and start round 10 by working a half double crochet into the first space. It's another easy round, one half double crochet in each stitch. I'll see you at the end of the round. We worked into the first stitch, so you just need to slip stitch to the top of the starting half double crochet to finish off round 10. Round 11 is the final round for the first section of the glove. So chain one to get up to height and we're going to be working in single crochet. We'll be working in the first space just because it's the final round. Insert your hook and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops and that is a single crochet. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So you need to put one single crochet into each stitch from the round below. If you're on track with a pattern, your stitch count for round 11 will be equal to the length of your starting chain. I'll leave you to work the single crochets and I'll meet you in a moment to finish off this section of the glove. This is my 24th stitch, so I've finished the round. Now, you can slip stitch if you would like to, but because this is the top of my glove, I'm going to work an invisible join to give it a much neater finish. The invisible join is really simple. I'll give you a quick look at it as I'm doing it, but if you find you need a more in-depth walkthrough, I've got a video that shows you how to do it. If I had to choose just one project that was worth using invisible joins, it would be gloves like these. I gave a similar pair to a friend and her mother-in-law crochets, and she wanted to know how I finished them because she couldn't see that familiar slip stitch at the top and I felt rather chuffed. I know it's nothing that special, it's just a join, but I have an unreasonable level of affection for this technique. This is the chain one, and this is the top of the single crochet where we would normally slip stitch. To invisible join, you go one stitch to the left of the spot you would normally slip stitch, and you insert your needle underneath both loops of that, making sure you don't split your yarn in the process. You pull the needle and the yarn through, and then you insert your needle into the top of the stitch where the yarn is coming out of, so into the last stitch you made just here. And you take the needle out into the back of your work or into the inside of your glove in this case. 
And when that's done, you have something that looks very much like the top of a stitch. Very neat. And you can just weave your tail in nice and securely. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm also going to weave in the other tails from this section of the glove. And then I'll come back and show you how we work the thumb. I'll see you in a moment. All right, it's the bit you've been waiting for, thumb time. I'm going to attach my yarn and work my first stitch using a standing single crochet. If you prefer to attach your yarn a different way, that is totally fine. Attach your yarn to the top of the rightmost stitch on your thumb gap. Otherwise, put a slip knot on your hook and insert your hook into that rightmost stitch going under both loops. You can see that the knot is just sort of sitting on my hook slightly to the right. And then I yarn over and I pull up a loop and I've got two loops on my hook. The knot is still just sort of sitting there to the right. I hold onto it with my finger and I yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And then I have made my first single crochet. So once you've attached your yarn, work a single crochet. And we're going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches that form the bottom of the thumb gap. The first six stitches of the thumb are really easy because we're working into the top of actual stitches. But from here, we don't have that luxury. We're going to spread six stitches out around this section of the thumb gap. So for the next stitch, we're going to be working near this double crochet. Now you can work around the double crochet and pop your hook there, but I like to work into the double crochet. I find it creates less gaps. So I insert my hook first of all in the bottom of that stitch like this, catching two loops of it. Then I just pull up a loop and I yarn over and pull through those two loops and that's my first single crochet. And I'm going to work another single crochet into this same double crochet into the top half of it and this part of the stitch is tighter so it's a little bit trickier to work into. And I've split the yarn a little bit. I'll just back out and fix that up. There we go. So that's a second single crochet into that same stitch. And now I'm going to work a third stitch and it is going to be worked into that piece of yarn. Do you remember the one that we didn't catch up when we um, were working above the thumb gap? So it's a nice easy spot to put a single crochet. And for the fourth single crochet, going to work into um, the top of this next double crochet just here and our next two stitches one will go into the bottom of that double crochet again sort of splitting the stitch and catching two loops of it I'll just move the tail out of the way it's it a little bit hard to see what I'm doing I'm just going to catch two loops from that stitch like that and for the sixth stitch I'll just go into this little corner spot here so it's not crucial that you place your stitches exactly the way I have I can just remember vividly as a beginner not liking when people told me just to put six stitches in so I was a bit more precise about it slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet to finish the round You'll be pleased to know that the next round is really simple. We're back to work in half double crochet. Chain one to get up to height and work your first half double crochet in that first space. And I'll meet you at the end of the round because you just need to put one half double crochet into each of the stitches from the round below. So at the end of the round, you will have 12 stitches. I'll see you there. We worked into the first space, so don't put a stitch on top of the slip stitch, just slip stitch to the top of your first half double crochet to finish off this round. And now chain one to get up to height. And for this round, you're again working into that first space with a half double crochet and then putting one half double crochet into each stitch from the round below. Nice and simple. I'll meet you in just a moment when you're ready to finish the round. 
You should have 12 stitches at the end of this round. This finishes the thumb off for me, but you can add another round of either single or half double crochet if you'd like a longer thumb. Single crochet might be better. Past this point, the longer stitches can start to gape away from your thumb. I have cut my yarn and I'm leaving an extra long tail because when you weave the tail in, if you'd like to, you can also take the opportunity to sew closed a couple of points where the glove can gape under tension. I am going to use an invisible join again to finish off this section. You can slip stitch if you'd rather. Each glove will gape in slightly different spots, but I'll give you an idea of what I do. So if you would like to sew close the gapes, you can do something similar. I'll just work my invisible join first. Locate the top of the first half double crochet. Go one stitch immediately to the left of it. Slip the needle under both loops and pull the yarn through and then pop the needle back into the top of the last stitch in the round. Bring it out inside the glove. I'm going to weave this in a bit so the join is nice and secure before I tackle the gapes. I'll skip through this bit as all I'm doing is over sewing a few times so that when I work on the gapes I don't pull on this stitch. So that is secured in nicely. I'm going to bring my yarn over to the first spot that the glove is gaping, which is between a couple of double crochets where the thumb is joined on. I'm just making a couple of discrete stitches to get me over to the spot. So what I'm going to do is just sort of work around that hole, or in fact those two holes, and gently close the stitches up around them kind of encourage the stitches to be closer together. The only warning I'll give you with doing this is that you don't want to overdo it. You want to just gently close up the gapes. You don't want to end up with hard bumps where you've done a whole lot of sewing. So that's really done it. I'm now going to head over to the other side because there's another gape over there that I want to fix up. It is just repetition though, so I'll meet you in a moment to start on the band. Let's put a band on this cute little glove. At the moment it looks adorably miniature, but with a band it will look much more adult size. I suggest starting the band near the seam. You can attach your yarn however you prefer, or you can follow along with me. I'm going to use a standing stitch, a standing half double crochet this time. So put a slip knot on your hook and yarn over on the hook. Put a finger on the yarn to hold it in place. We're going to start this round near the seam, but not immediately above it. Insert your hook a couple of stitches to the left of the seam. Now yarn over and pull up a loop. Hold the tail in place with the middle finger of your left hand so that you can yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Now we just half double crochet our way around. I'll meet you near the end of the round to show you what we do when we reach the slip stitch in the round below, as I want to do something a little bit different there to hide the slip stitch. If you like the look of the standing half double crochet, but you'd like me to walk you through it more slowly, I'll pop a link in the description box for you and you can watch the video on that because standing stitches are a really useful technique. I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm right near that slip stitch in the round below and you can just work into it normally, but I'll show you what that can look like. This is one half of the slip stitch and I'm working into it. So I'll pass over the other half of it and I'll work into the next stitch. When you do that, you get this quite noticeable gap. Even when you slip stitch and join it up, that gap is there. So I'm going to unravel that and show you what the other option is. I've worked into one half of the slip stitch and this is the half that you wouldn't normally work into. So I've yarned over, insert your hook, just catch two loops of it as best you can, pull up a loop and then insert your hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop again. There are now four loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. That's a half double crochet decrease. It's a way of spreading a half double crochet over two stitches and that will fill in that gap really nicely. 
Now I'm going to slip stitch to the top of my first half double crochet to finish the round. And standing half double crochets have a habit, the top of them are flicking up a bit, so you just have to poke the top of it back into place and you can slip stitch perfectly normally. Now we're going to get into the ribbing. This is the fun bit. Chain 11. Skip the first chain, the one closest to the hook, and work a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Insert your hook, catching one loop of the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops. And then work nine more single crochets, one in each chain. That is my 10 single crochets. Now I need to attach this to my glove. So have a close look and identify the slip stitch join in the round below. That stitch there. And we're going to slip stitch to the stitch one to the left of that. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook and then slip stitch for a second time into the stitch to the left of that one. And now chain one. Turn your work. We're now going to work our way back up that little strip of single crochets we just made. So, have a little look. This is the chain one and then the two slip stitches, and then that's the top of the single crochet. We're going to be working into the top of the single crochet. So we're going to be working back loop single crochet. Insert your hook down into the stitch, catching just one loop of it. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Let's do that together one more time. Insert your hook, catching just one loop at the back of the stitch below. Pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. I'll get you to work nine back loop single crochets, so that's seven more than we have already, and then I'll show you what we do with that last stitch. But I will leave this running at normal speed for you in case you need the visual reminder of how to work the back loop stitches. So it is just a normal single crochet, it's just that rather than working through both loops of the top of the stitch in the round below, you're just working through that back loop. And by working through just the back loop, we create that nice ridged effect on the band. I love that such a simple technique creates such a lovely finish and it's comfortable as well as looking good. It's warm, but it isn't tight the way a glove with a chain at the base can be. So that was my ninth back loop single crochet. The 10th and last stitch in this row is a normal single crochet through both loops of the stitch in the round below. Once you've done that, You've finished that row and you can see the ridge effect is starting to show. Chain one and turn your work so you can work back down this strip of single crochet. The first stitch is a normal single crochet under both loops. And the other nine stitches in this row are back loop single crochets. So I'll let you do those and I'll come back to show you how to connect this row up to the glove and start the next row. We're getting into a pattern repeat where we keep doing the same thing until this ribbing is finished, but I'll walk you through one more row before I leave you to it. If you aren't careful when you're working this ribbing, you can lose stitches. That tends to happen at this end because the final stitch, it can be a little bit squishy. So do count your stitches to make sure you're working 10 stitches in each row. When you've got your 10 stitches, it's time to slip stitch twice, one here and one here. The first slip stitch goes immediately to the left of the last slip stitch you made, and the second slip stitch goes right next to it. Then chain one, turn your work, and count back three, the chain one and your two slip stitches and your first back loop single crochet will go there. So now I've got my yarn sorted out. 
that's one, two, three, and back loop single crochet goes here. So just like the previous row, and like every other row to follow, it is nine back loop single crochets. And I'll meet you at the end of the row to work the last stitch and head into the other side of this row. The 10th stitch is a single crochet under both loops of the stitch we're working into. Now chain one, turn, and single crochet under both loops. Now work nine back loop single crochets to get you back down to meet the glove. I'll meet you there to show you again how to connect this row up to the glove. I'm just double checking that I have 10 stitches. I'm all set. So slip stitch once and twice and make that slip stitching look really difficult. <laughs> Chain one, turn your work, count back three, one, two, three, and back loop single crochet. I'll leave you here to work your way around the glove. Work nine back loop single crochets and one normal single crochet both up and back the ribbing. So pause the video here and unpause when you have one lonely stitch left without ribbing attached and we'll finish this glove off together. I've finished almost all of the ribbing. I've worked my way down and this is the point where I would normally be slip stitching. I would be slip stitching just here and my second slip stitch would go here but as you can see there's already something there. That is where the chain of 11 comes out. So we're going to finish this off. Slip stitch into that first space and then slip stitch again, yes, into the spot where the chain of 11 is coming out, just there. Chain one, turn, and we're going to work our way up this one last time. So count back three, that's the chain one and the two slip stitches, and put your back loop single crochet into that fourth spot just there. We're going to do what we've done with all of the other bits of ribbing, nine back loop single crochets and one single crochet. So I'll see you at the end of the row in just a moment. Put your final single crochet in under both loops. Fantastic. Now we're going to join these two bits together now, but first I'm going to get you to pull up a loop and slip your hook out and turn the glove inside out. We're ready to go. We'll be joining these together from the end where the loop is and starting by putting our hook into this 10th chain. You might like to start with the chain closest to the glove and count your way up to 10 just to ensure that you're putting your hook in the right stitch and you're lining the sides up properly. So pop your hook in there under two loops of it and then catch the loop of yarn on your hook again. Pull that through so all my stitches are lined up really nicely. Chain one, insert your hook in the 10th chain again, under two loops of it, just like this. And now insert your hook under the top of the single crochet, under two loops of it, yarn over, pull through and slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch our way down this little row. So you're going to catch for the next stitch just one loop of the chain, but two loops of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through and slip stitch. And the same for the next stitch. Just catch one loop of the chain, two loops of the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through and slip stitch. So I'm sure you get the idea. One loop of the chain, two loops of the stitch all your way along the side. We are so close to finishing this glove. I'm really excited. I'll leave you to do that and come back in just a moment to show you how to finish this glove off. So the band is all joined together and it's time to fasten off. I know that a lot of people like to chain one to create a little knot, but I prefer just to weave the tailing really securely, particularly when there's a ridge like this. 
I think that chain one knot could create a bit of a bump and be less comfortable, but I am certain it's not a game stopper. If that's the way you feel comfortable fastening your tails in, do that because the last thing you want is for your glove to come unraveled. And the last thing I want is to hear that you've done it my way and it's my fault your glove fell apart. I'm pretty comfortable and confident with my needle. I'll over sew quite a few times and I'll take my yarn off away from this join. So if any of it pokes out, it'll be a long way from coming undone. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, give it a like or leave me a comment because I would love to hear from you. I'm having a lot of fun making these videos. I'm making a matching beanie and scarf for these gloves. They'll have a ribbed look to match the bands, so keep an eye out for those too. If you're in a rush and you need a beanie pronto, try out my puff stitch slouchy with a camel stitch band. It genuinely looks good on everyone and it's made from eight ply yarn so you can make it to match these gloves. Of course, before you start making matching accessories, you need to make the right hand glove. Use the timestamps in the description box to jump back to where the pattern begins and follow along until you reach round seven, when I'll remind you to use the timestamps again so you can follow the pattern for the alternate round seven. Then you can jump back and follow the original pattern for the rest of the glove. Again, thanks for watching. I hope your gloves work out beautifully. I'll see you next time. This is the alternate round seven for the right hand glove. We start the round in the same way, chain two to get up to height and work a double crochet into that first space. If you started with a chain of 24, you need to work another 22 double crochets, one in each space. For any other length chain, I want you to double crochet until you have seven spaces remaining. Or if you made your previous glove with a larger thumb gap, you'll need to have enough spaces remaining for that gap plus one extra stitch. I'll get you to pause the video and unpause when you've worked those double crochets. You should have seven empty stitches between your last double crochet and the chain two. You're going to skip six of them and work a double crochet into the seventh space. I find it easier to work the stitch when I fold the glove. Now you can finish the round by slip stitching to the top of the first double crochet. That's the thumb gap for the right hand sorted. From this point you can use the timestamps to jump back to round 8 and follow along with the video. You'll have two warm hands in no time. Bye!